Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. Join with me as we press in today into the beautiful secret place to learn how to walk in and under an open heaven. Now, lay hold of this for one minute. We see in the Word that Jesus, He walked under an open heaven in terms of His prayer life and His ministry. Any prayer that He prayed, it produced and it always was answered. When He was in ministry, there was not one person that came to Him sick that didn't get healed. There was not one person that came with a need, whatever that need might be, that it did not get answered. He saw power, miracles in His ministry. And He calls and expects us to walk under that same open heaven, not because of our earning, but because of Him and through what He did. In this episode, I'm going to share powerful insight from Smith Wigglesworth. And I pray that it would really press and challenge you and provoke you to get deeper in the waters of the secret place, to know Him and lay hold of how to walk under an open heaven, to have such a confidence but have your life securely built upon the Word, knowing His will in this time where the enemy wants to so challenge and bring us to this place where we're always questioning. Oh, to walk in that place of the absolute, His absolute Word, which reveals His absolute will. Amen? Well, Father, we just come in the name of Jesus and we just seek Your face. We cry out to You. We want to learn of You today. I ask You, Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Minister life to each person. And Father, let this be your word and season. Let it be bread from the presence. And Father, let it edify, encourage, and build up each person and draw them closer to you. Jesus, receive all the honor, all the power, and all the glory. I thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Listen to this uh, from the Apostle of John. He said in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, and this is the confidence which we have before Him, that if we ask anything uh, according to His will, He hears us. And we know that if He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from Him. He's telling us that we too can walk under an open heaven, that we, if we will learn how to press into the secret place and know His will by abiding in His Word, we can come to a place of such confidence that we ask and we receive. And we see, of course, Jesus, uh, particularly as you look at the Gospel of John, Jesus calls us to come and ask and to receive. Now, Smith Wigglesworth said this so beautifully, it is necessary that we find our bearings in the Word. There's nothing that will bring you to such confidence as a life that is well-pleasing to Him. When Daniel's life pleased God, he could ask to be kept in a lion's den. We have to have foundations built solid, secure in the absolute Word, knowing that it is absolute, in an hour where the enemy wants to bring everything down to relative, so that you're always challenging. Because when things change, circumstances change, symptoms change, we start to question, we start to wonder. And he wants us to come to the absolute. We think about the story of Jesus when he's walking on the earth with his disciples, some of the things that they face, the challenges, the storm on the boat where the disciples were moved by what they saw, what they felt. Or Peter, when he's walking on the water, where he's moved by what he felt. And yet Jesus remains in this absolute place, always walking victorious. And that's the call of heaven, to bring us to a place where we're unmoved, because we know His absolute will. And what He declares in His Word is His absolute will. Now, we see here where Smith is talking about, of course, Daniel. And Daniel was a man who knew how to seek the Lord's face and had that relationship with the Lord. He was put, of course, into the lion's den, where we know that lions, uh, if they're hungry, they eat you. If they don't, they just kill you and wait to eat you later. 
Yet Daniel had such a confidence of faith, a confidence of knowing because of the relationship he had with the living God, that in the midst of that situation where everything said he should fail, everything said it was all over, he knew his God would not fail him. And think about, had God failed the powerful prophetic words that Daniel would bring and produce that are for this generation we would have missed. God wants us to understand that He is fully invested in us and He's looking for us to be fully invested in Him, trusting Him and knowing that His word is absolute. Smith went on to say, but you cannot ask with confidence until there is perfect union between you and Jesus. The foundation is confidence in and fidelity to God. We have to have forged in the secret place a union, a fellowship, a deep relationship with the Lord. Not just a knowing about, not just a coming occasionally and having an interaction with, but a knowing because it's those that you know you trust, those that you spend the time, those that you get to uh, interact with and you get to have rich fellowship with that you come to know and to trust. And in the midst of a trial and a difficulty, that's not the time to wonder, can you trust this person? You need to know. It's got to be tested and proven. And God wants you to form in the secret place a relationship with Him that you know you can trust. And that in that place, He opens up the Word to you and shows you the Word is absolute, the Word is faithful, the Word is true. In an hour where all the attack is on the Word, it wants to challenge the Word and make it just a a superstitious book, a historical book that has degrees of truth in it, but not the truth. But rather, the men, the world has absolute truth, but when all they do have is relative that which is politically correct in this hour, even though it's subject to change. But the word remains absolute in every situation, in every generation. It never changes. And I'm grateful because when I come into that secret place and I want to know him, his mercy, his loving kindness towards me remains consistent, remains absolute. It doesn't change. The blood of Jesus doesn't change so that when I blow it and I miss it, I can always come back and throw myself on the mercy because it's absolute. And that's why I know if we want to abide under an open heaven, it is built upon Jesus and it's through him and by him. It's not by my doing. I cannot make this. I cannot forge this. I cannot someone manufacture it or think that I can earn it because I can never get to that place of meeting the absolute standard of consistency that is found in Jesus. We need Him, and we need to build a relationship with Him, a relationship where He speaks loudly, boldly into our lives. Smith said this, Some people think that Jesus wept because of the love He had for Lazarus, but that could not be. Jesus knew that these people around the grave, even Martha, had not come to the realization that whatever he would ask of the Father, he would be given. Now, of course, we're talking about the story of the raising of Lazarus. And Jesus, before, once he gets the report that Lazarus is sick, makes a declaration that this is not unto death. He already knew the outcome. He already knew what the Father's will was and made it known. He never doubted. In fact, when the Father called him to wait four days to the place where it looked like it failed, where the relative truth said it was over, Jesus is still solid, unmoved. And in fact, he is broken to tears by the fact that the people, here he is, he has now served at least three and a half years in ministry preaching a message, declaring that he is the resurrection. And while they believed, they didn't. They couldn't see it. And many of us, because we don't forge that intimacy, yet they had fellowship with Jesus. They were close to Jesus. 
They spent time with Jesus. But it's got to be more than that, as we're going to see. I want to spend time with Him. I want to be close to Him. But I want to go deeper. I want to press to that place where I am changed, where I come and I allow Him to speak and reveal, even offend me, even challenge me, because I want to walk in His absolute truth and not mine. Not my opinions. They all must bow. Because up until that time, you think about Mary and Martha. They had opinions, and they've been taught, and they interpreted what Jesus said through those opinions. And those opinions at times would work, and then they would fail. But we must not allow our opinions to dictate. We must allow His Word, His faithfulness, to speak in our lives louder and bolder. In John 14, verses 13 and 14, here we hear Jesus saying this, And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now, there's two parts here. Number one, there's an absolute expectation that if we ask in his name, we will receive. And number two, that in our asking and in our receiving, the Son is glorified in the Father. And I don't know about you, I want to see Jesus glorified. My life is to live to see Jesus glorified. And that means I am meant to walk a life where I'm under an open heaven, praying the right prayers that produce the right things and never fail. Always bringing Him glory. Always touching the heart of the Father and releasing from heaven the resources of heaven so that Jesus is glorified. Smith said this, The moment you pray, you find the heavens are open. If you have to wait for the heavens to be opened, something is wrong. If we are walking in this relationship with Him, that we spend the time in the secret place and it's forged, it's developed, it's matured, and it comes to the place where we know we spend the time in the Word not just reading about, not reading and allowing our opinions and others' opinions to dictate, but rather here, Holy Spirit, reveal to me, speak to me, show me how many of us we have an opinion, even good opinions. For example, healing. We've read the books. We've heard the stories. But do we get in the Word and seek His face and say, teach me one-on-one -on -one healing. Show it to me so that I walk in a living re revelation of it that is breathed from the Father's lips into my heart by the Holy Spirit so that I know that I know what His will is. Many of us, like the uh, um, man that came to Jesus, I know you can heal, but if you're willing, if it's your will, will you heal me? And that's where most of us abide. And yet Jesus was very clear, I will be healed. There was not one person that Jesus ever said, it is not my will to heal you. He healed them all. And we need to get in line upon line, precept upon precept, allow the spirit of the living God to build in us the truth and how it works, how to walk in that. How to walk in that truth so that when we ask, it is not built upon a good foundation of good opinions that can be right, somebody else's revelation, but rather it's built upon the Word, revealed in our hearts, solidified by that experience and that union with the living God. Smith explained, I tell you, what makes us lose the confidence is disobedience to God and His laws. Jesus said it was because of them who stood around that He prayed, but He knew that He, that he had heard, been heard. And because He knew that His Father heard Him always, He knew that the dead would come forth. Jesus already knew. He said, Father, I know you hear me. So He wasn't praying for the answer, because he already knew. 
He already knew days ago. It had already been resolved. It was for the people. He wanted them to see. He wanted them to hear. And he wanted the Father to be glorified. He wanted them to see the power of prayer and how prayer works and it's effective. And that prayer goes to the Father, not through another vessel, not through some saint or thing, but to the Father through Jesus. Because your, your foundation is 100% based on Jesus. We think some of if I go through this vessel, if I pray to the saint, or if I do this, or I do that, trying to earn it, or think that I can make a way through somebody else who I believe has earned it. Nobody has earned it. Nobody's qualified for it but Jesus. And so our coming is in that name, standing with a confidence and a boldness in the name. It is only through that name that we enter open heaven. It is only by what Jesus did that we can in any way receive answer prayer. It's 100% because of Jesus. And we must throw ourselves upon the confidence of what Jesus did and who we are in him. And I'm so grateful that in the secret place, the Holy Spirit turns up and he reveals, reminds us of what Jesus did. And in that reminding, it comes forth as a fire in our bones. It comes forth with a truth. It comes forth spoken as fresh bread to us. It's living. It is personalized. It is absolute. And when it is spoken and we receive it, it gets into us and it builds and it solidifies. Smith said this, There is a divine revelation within you that came in you when you were born from above, and this is real faith. And that is when I stand as a believer because of Jesus, allowing, because I'm a son, because I'm a child, the Holy Spirit to speak and then to bear witness. What a thought that he bears witness that we are the children qualified. So I don't need to go through all these things. I don't need to somehow think that I can earn it and offend the living God. But rather, always exalting, honoring my Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal what my Jesus did and who I am because of Him and through Him so that I can come with a bold confidence honoring Him. Oh, I don't qualify. I am not worthy in any way. But I come and in everything I do, it's an honoring of my Jesus. I stand grateful, and I stand before him in the secret place of his presence, so grateful every moment of my life, because I'm able to draw close to the God who made me. He didn't have to. He gave me life, and I will for eternity be able to live and enjoy life with him because of what he did. I don't in any way qualify, and that my best days I still fall short, but Him. And oh, I am so grateful. And may He, Holy Spirit, put in us a grateful heart, an understanding heart, that it's all because of Jesus, and it's through Jesus. We need to spend a little longer there. We need to let the potter do a little more work in us. Smith said this, you cannot talk about these things which you have never experienced. It seems to me that God has a process of training us. You cannot take people into the depths of God unless you have been broken yourself. I have been broken and broken and broken. Praise God that He is near to them that are of a broken heart. You must have a brokenness to get into the depths of God. We must be broken of our opinion, our thoughts, broken of anything in us that would somehow in us think that we can earn it. Or in us, we're so focused on how disqualified we are. And in this reverse mindset, think that we're earning it. We try to so belittle ourselves. I stand not because of me, but because of Jesus. And I recognize and realize who I am. And I stand there with such a brokenness to know that I have become accepted in the beloved because of Jesus. What an honor. And I refuse to belittle that, but I never forget. And I stand broken because of it. And as a consequence, my thoughts, my mind towards others is so touched 
that I see and I prefer others because I realize the degree of mercy He has shown towards me and what He has done, how He's lifted me, how He's qualified me, how He's accepted me. And I stand before Him so grateful, grateful because of that. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, 11, a Psalm of David, it says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. This should be everything about us. You cannot stand strong. You cannot stand secure. You cannot stand in that place where you are unmoved unless you're seeking His face because it's not built upon your strength. It's not built upon your own personal confidence. You're manufacturing it. You're making it. Some of us have a very confident personality. You stand before absolute. You stand before the Lord our God in absolute truth, and you let His light shine in you, and you start to realize how far you short you fall, how disqualified you are. And then you realize the extent of His absolute mercy touching, lifting you. It makes you. And I love about the great heroes of faith. I love to share their stories and their insight because I look at these are the ones that were wrecked in the secret place, realized how far short they fell. But they got a hold of the Holy Spirit who reminded them of what Jesus did and who they now are in Christ and what Jesus is doing in them. And they made a stand in such gratitude forever wrecked that they had to preach and tell everyone they knew about the wonderful experience of Jesus. It was real to them. It was life to them. And that brought them to a place where Father God stood in such honor and said, that glorifies my son. That touches my heart because there's no boasting in us. There's no boasting in anything about me. It's all about Jesus. You want to press into the deep waters of the secret place? You want to draw close to the Lord our God? It comes in this place of brokenness of us, brokenness of my opinion, brokenness of the need for my voice to be heard, brokenness of the need for me and my rights. There's nothing about me anymore. And I recognize in this place of security something greater. See, I love, we all think that we, if I'm heard, if my rights are met, that I can get to this place of being something, that I can come into the place of real purpose. But it's here that you start to see in His presence where His mercy always goes beyond. It's so much greater. And where He wants to bring you, you start to get the realization it's so far beyond anything that you could ever accomplish. You and your best day will never come close to anything that He wants to do. And yet He says, let me do it in you. Let me do it through you, not because you ever will qualify, not because you'll ever be good enough in yourself, because your adequacy is not of you, it's of me. And I want to impart it to you out of my love for you. I want to wreck you, to the, swallow you up in my love and let you know it so that you stand secure and confident in it and come to the place that you know it's absolute in your life so that no matter what you go through, you know you can trust me because my love is always absolute. It never shakes. It never changes. And you don't ever have to earn it. It is always consistent so that when it is tried, and it will be tried, and when you go through the test, you stand firm, secure, unmoved. And when you're in the boat and it begins to, you know, the storms come and it looks like that boat's going to go under and it's all over for you. Like Jesus, you sleep. You stand totally secure, kept by the Father. In this dark hour, kept by the Father. Smith said, we fail to realize the largeness of our Father's measure, and we forget that He has a measure which cannot be exhausted. It pleases Him when we ask for the most. How much more? I believe we look at the Lord. He always wants to exceed in the abundantly above and beyond. He never comes short. He never supplies just the right amount. It's always more. Because he is the God of more, because it is a demonstration of his great mercy and faithfulness and kindness in his heart. And he wants you in the secret place to truly know his heart, so that what you become is a witness of the intensity of his heart, demonstrated through what Jesus did. 
Every living is something absolute in a time and a world where everything is relative, where everything you have to try to earn this place of acceptance, but you can never stand fully secure because if one thing changes, all of a sudden you're out. You're no longer in the clique, that little small society of being accepted. But I'm grateful that in Jesus, his love never changes. And he stands always accepting me, always lifting me, always bring me into something greater, bigger, above and beyond. Smith said, this confidence comes not from much speaking, but it comes because of our fellowship with him. And I just want to stop there because many people think that somehow they will be heard because of their many words. Some people always want to give this long message and they don't realize it's not in the number of words, but it's in the depth and the life. And that is forged in the secret place where God makes you. God puts into you life. God touches you and gives you that bread, that food for each person, that substance that he is that you can't make or manufacture that goes bigger and beyond and beyond. Smith said, there's a wonderful fellowship with Jesus. The chief thing is to be sure that we take time for communication with him. There is a communion with Jesus that is life. And that is better than preaching. If God tells you definitely to do anything, be sure that it is God that tells you. We should always do that which he tells us, that place of such radical obedience. But it comes out of this knowing, knowing in the word, because he'll never violate, add to, take from his word. And you will find the closer you draw, the deeper your fellowship with him, the more you get in the word, the more you want the word, the more you want the word speaking to you, because God always honors his word. Jesus is that living word. In James 4, 8, it says, draw nigh unto him, and he will draw nigh to you. You can come as close as you want. You can walk as deep and as far, as, 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 as far into the secret place as you want. I want to get as close to him as is humanly possible while I'm on this earth. I want to know his heart, his thoughts. I want to be always pressing forward, going deeper. And I pray to provoke that in you that we might be a people of him, of his heart. So this generation will be turned around, that we would walk under an open heaven because we please him. We walk in obedience to him. And we're always in a confidence because we know him. Smith said, if the sword, talking about the word, ever comes to you, never straighten yourself up against it, but let it pierce you. You must be yielded to the Word of God. The Word will work out love in our hearts. And when practical love is in our hearts, there is no room to vaunt ourselves. We ourselves, as we see ourselves as nothing when we get lost in this divine love. And this is the place that He wants to bring us to in the secret place. And this is the place where we begin to abide under an open heaven, where we allow His Word to speak to carry absolute authority, where we allow his word to challenge, to cut, to remove, to prune, to purge, so that every aspect of our life is brought into compliance. It has to speak louder. And we have to dare to take the time to listen, to pursue, to go after, to find deeply in the word what is the truth. I see many people come to me and they get the opinions of what somebody said on YouTube or some book, good or bad, but they solidify themselves based on that opinion. And the call of the secret place is to get before him open-hearted, salt, and seek him and say, speak to me. I will wait until you teach me. I want to learn from you. I come as a child seeking the Father. I'm seeking your face continuously. That relationship that's deeper than the hands, simply built upon my needs, 
I want to know you. I want to know your heart. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your will. I want to know your way because that is everything to me. You want to forge a deeper relationship with somebody. You don't build it upon what can I get. You build it upon me giving. And the Father is looking for us to give. And the greatest thing that you can give is the secret place of your heart. That secret place, He came and revealed His to you. That place where He revealed His heart, opened it up so tenderly, where we could so reject, injure, hurt Him. And many did. Many do. But He doesn't pull back because He so knows that you need an encounter with the secret place of His heart. That secret place, everything points to Jesus, the very desire of His heart. And that's how He sees you. And that's His outreach and His love toward you. It's through Jesus. And He says, give me your heart. The call is for us to so surrender. And it is seen in our pursuit. Seen in our willingness to bring every thought and say, I want to hear of you so that my thoughts bow to yours. My will bows to yours. I will invest the time. I'm asking you, teach me. I'm asking you, and then I will show you this proof of my wanting to learn. I bring my word. Teach me, show me. We have all these tools, various tools to help us in our Bible study, word studies, etc. And I can stand in the secret place and say, speak to me, show me, Holy Spirit, open it to me. And I invest and take the time, build line upon line, precept upon precept, so that I might know. Then I might know. Smith said, you can never pray the prayer of faith if you look at the person who is needing it. There's only one place to look, and that is Jesus. See, in this life, we will face those challenges, the situations where we'll be called upon to pray, like Jesus did. And we must know that we stand under an open heaven because we're looking towards Jesus, not the situation. There's a powerful law in science that uh, something that's observed never changes. And we wonder why if I look at the person and I'm asking for something to change and it doesn't, because our eyes are meant to be fixed on Jesus. The one who doesn't change and the one who changes all things. And if you get your eyes and you build this so that it is so part, it's your custom, your routine, it's automatic. A soldier trains for battle. They have to go through boot camp and be trained so that those responses become automatic. And God wants us to build that time in the secret place so these responses become automatic life-saving, life-saving for us and for others. Smith said, my soul was stirred. I was anxious for God to get a chance to do something to have His way. And how many of us in situations do we know Him and know His heart and we say, God, I'm anxious for you to have your way in my life in this circumstance. I've got to get to you. And I'm tired of allowing my opinions, my thoughts, and me to get in the way or others. It's got to be you, God. It's got to be you. Let me finish with this. Smith said, Oh, beloved, may God help us this afternoon to get our eyes off of the conditions and symptoms, no matter how bad they may be, and get them fastened upon Him. And then we shall be able to pray the prayer of faith. I want you so secure in the deep waters where you get so far beyond yourself sink or swim. It's all complete abandonment to Him. Absolute trust in Him. And it is done by the simple seeking. Crying out and letting Him know, I want to learn from you. I'm seeking your face. I'm seeking your strength. I can't do this without you. And so I will wait because you are absolute. I will wait because I trust you. And I will be found here knowing that you will meet with me 
and you will answer because you cannot fail. You will not fail. So I'm here and I will come back every day and I'll be found here so that when you come into the garden in the cool of the evening, you will find me here waiting for you, looking for you, wanting you, seeking to listen to you, not hiding or pulling back, but pressing towards. Amen. Well, I pray this message has blessed you, encouraged, and strengthened you in the name of Jesus. And if it has, would you please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Check out more in the series. We're doing a whole new series on The Secret Place 2022 to really help you to really, in this hour, have that security in Him. And would you consider becoming a prayer partner? Or we're building a revival center here in Elgin. Would you consider becoming a financial partner to that, as well as a prayer partner? For more information, go to our website, GodsGeneralsAndRevivals.com, because it's a time, it's late, and we need to really help refresh, build, encourage, and strengthen believers to live boldly for Jesus. So I thank you. I thank you, and I want you to know that we're praying for you, that you were loved. And I pray that you would be so encouraged and drawn into a greater intimacy with the living God, Jesus, and His Word. Amen. We'll be blessed, be encouraged. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.